This is really, um, I've been looking forward to this for years, years and years and years. Hello and welcome to another Kyle Connor YouTube channel video. You know, we cover a whole bunch of cars on this channel and uh, none of these videos are nicely produced. I always tell you guys not to subscribe and uh, this will follow that same formula. It's gonna be a terrible video, but I've never driven a Volt or a Cadillac ELR. And today I get to cross two vehicles that I talk about a lot off the list. I think it's crazy as someone who, yeah, of course I love combustion cars and manual transmissions and all that stuff, but as someone who's a genuine car enthusiast, but also appreciates electric vehicles, I think it's kind of crazy how I've never driven a Volt. I've been in the second generation once for like a five minute test drive, but I've never spent any time in one. So my dad, I'm actually visiting him in Connecticut, uh, has both a Volt and a Cadillac ELR. And in this video, I'm gonna be able to experience both of those for the first time. So we're gonna start with the Chevy Volt, which is right here. And my dad behind the camera, what is this thing? It's a 20... This is a 2015 Chevy Volt Gen 1 with 144,000 miles on it. And the thing is the mighty Volt. Yeah, well, I like the idea of a Volt because it's a, a range extended EV, which means it's primarily an electric vehicle driven primarily by an electric motor. Uh, however, the combustion engine pretty much its main job is to charge the battery pack when you run out of electricity. And how many kilowatt hours is this, 16? 13 and a half. Oh, thir is that usable? That's what's showing That's what's showing now according to the uh, OBD2 ah, okay. VP. So this one's had some degradation. Yes, then. Okay. absolutely. Um, but then there's also like this crazy clutch system that can connect the engine directly to the wheels for highway driving, which is pretty cool. And that's where you get peak efficiency. So there's a lot to explore here. Um, we're not gonna dive into all the nerd details. I really just wanna have my first go. Now, Dad, the way you drive this car for the most part is you plug it in every day and then you can... Uh, every other day. And but, I have a six mile one way commute so yeah. I can get, you know, back and forth to work on pure electric two days in a row. Right. Which is, uh, that that seems to make a lot of sense. And it's only a three kilowatt onboard charger? 3.6? Uh, yeah, 3.6, 3.3, something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's not a fast onboard charger. No, I believe you don't, you don't need that though. The later generation Volts did get an upgraded charger yes. right towards the end of their life cycle. I do believe so. And um, the ELR that you have is a 2016, which is pretty much the same internals as this car, just juiced up a bit. Correct. Okay, so... Um, and personally, I like the look of uh, the exterior of the Gen 1 Volt better than the Gen 2. Gen 2. I agree. Just, just the aesthetics of it. And this is, this is the last year of the Gen 1. So some people, some purists actually believe like this is the car this is the item. one to own <laughs> okay. especially with 144,000 well, miles let on let me it. steal the uh, camera let's show the viewers around and just do a quick volt tour now on my dad's channel out of spec dave he's done range testing comparison testing of this versus the elr over there but um this is the volt interesting i've always noticed this black body molding here to make it look like it i guess had a lower belt line but everyone always wants a high belt line for style so they like want anti-style this is the charging flap whoa <laughs> it looks so old it's got the voltec badging in there kyle this is a one owner car i picked it up wow you're the second owner second of this owner of this car yeah. wow okay and uh Actually, in the app, it tells you that this particular one's been driven 60% electric. 66% electric, correct. 66% of this car's life has been driven on electric. So I think this is a remote start. So GM stuff, and then we're going to... first. Yep, yeah. just did. Oh, yeah. Contactors are clicking. Oh. And, and the gas engine will kick on if it's under 33, 34 degrees when you do this okay. uh, automatically it's got a temperature sensor in there so you may not want to do this in your garage you definitely don't want to do this in your garage okay no. yeah because some plug-in hybrids will not kick on the combustion engine although i once tested the ford escape plug-in hybrid the yeah. current generation i had it plugged into a charging station and i preconditioned it from the ford app and it i saw the smoke coming out the exhaust that seems scary. <laughs> See, I'm like, how is it running and plugged into a charger? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, look at this. Uh, this is the XM. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. The car has XM. I don't know. It still works. I don't know who's paying for oh, it. Oh, someone's paying for your serious. <laughs> okay, so we have the fuel, I'm guessing, pressure release. When you fill it up with fuel, does it take a second for it to let you open the cap? Uh, no. 
not oh. that I noticed. Okay. This does require premium fuel, though. Of oh, course. premium fuel. Well, yeah, it actually, is. The Gen 2 does not, but Gen, Gen 2 does. Gen 2 doesn't need premium fuel. Gen 1 does. We got the premium cloth seats. Is this the. Ba Were there different specs on Volts? Yes. Is this the base this one? This is base, yes. Okay, yeah. So rental car spec here. All right. Oh, wow. Okay, instantly the seats are terrible. The best thing is when you start it up, you got to listen to it. It's just amazing. Look at this. We got a little animation happening here. All right, you push that button to start it up. Now listen. We got rap music playing. Is that, is that what you listen to? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the battery's dead. I really wanted to experience this thing electric, Dad. Uh, yeah, we'll just put it in. You can put it in mountain mode. Right, so we, we should charge it up a little bit, but it says our total range is 129 miles. 126 of those miles is from combustion. Yeah, so the way you read this is battery over there, gas over here. Right, yep, yeah. and then it'll tell you, I love how it tells you kilowatts, what's going on from the drivetrain stuff. Is this a touch screen? Yes. Uh, uh, hit, hit the uh, source, or actually hit home. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, here we go. So config, what does this do? Oh, okay, hold on. Vehicle settings, power door locks, don't know. This one, energy, that's probably what we want to see. You can get to ah, that with cool. this one here as well, that button. Oh, nice, nice. So charging, you can set it up. Oh, it tells you when it'll be completed by. Delayed based on departure time. Uh, that's probably the best thing for the battery pack, actually. Oh, yeah, absolutely energy info interesting so 34 mpg is what you've got over the last 20 miles but lifetime this car is close to 100 mpg yeah you can see on the last charge i drove it 20.7 miles on electric and 32.3 on gas oh that's what I it's see. saying on the okay. last but it's it's a little bit strange yeah uh, that doesn't add up to this no i know it's 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 a little bit odd efficiency tips Oh, look at this. We got a menu. Driving style. <laughs> Keep the ball green. I never even looked at this. <laughs> yeah. Use L in heavy stop and go traffic or when traveling downhill. Well, we know that. So you have the Prindle and L is basically just enhanced regen is my understanding. Climate setting. This is tells you all the things about how the climate affects the car and vehicle charging. It says, yeah, keep your vehicle plugged in which you have not done. Well, last night I didn't. I, I charged the ELR. I see. Well, I'm really curious to see how the combustion engine, here you go, turns okay. on for the first time because it's cold and I want to know if it just like cranks the thing on or not. You had the seat lean all the way back. Uh, yeah. Maybe I put it a bit too Yeah, Bro Brooklyn style, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, you, you know, you got to dodge the bullets with the B pillar. <laughs> that's, why you, that's why you want your body here. Okay into reverse chunky cool shifter that you go into this little thing i i think it's crazy how this is my first time ever driving a volt no yeah. regen paddles like the bolt had uh the elr does have regen paddles okay yes that's cool yeah and i believe the gen 2 volt does as well you got minivan windshield wipers on this thing <laughs> <laughs> so you can just come straight back to l which is where i'm going to keep it okay this feels nice, Dad. Kyle, I know. I, I don't know if I should sell it. I do have a little rattle in the back, but that's it. And I kind of like the rattle. It's 140,000 miles? 144. Yeah, 144. Wow. Yeah. This is cool. This is a nice car. Uh, yeah, and the heated seats are choice. They're good? Yeah, no heated steering wheel on this one. Okay. No ventilated seats. <laughs> but were those available? No. Oh, but okay. you could get heated. You could get leather in the uh, Premier trim, I believe they call it. Oh, I don't know how you pull out here. Uh, it's a, a little tough, yeah. a little bit of a challenge. And we're off my first time in a vault. Does D change the throttle mapping? No, it does not appear to. Let's see how much regen we have. Oh, pretty good regen. Are you an L? Yeah. Yeah, there's a decent, it bites. It bites pretty good. Yeah. So I'm just gonna drive it normally till the combustion engine kicks on. We have our power flow, which is fascinating. Make sure no one tries to squeeze around the mail truck in front of us. So you can see we're pretty much fully electric at the moment. And it's got decent pickup even in this mode. Now, we do have multiple drive modes. What are they, Dad? Normal, sport, mountain, and hold. Okay. 
So we're just in normal mode as the key up setting, I imagine. Your alignment is definitely off. Look at this. No, it isn't. Look, look how much lock Kyle, I have on that's, the wheel. That's called character. I mean, you should probably just have it aligned. It's killing your range. Oh, right? It's no. Look at this. No. How does that not bother you? It doesn't bother me. I don't even <laughs> notice that. Wow, we had 25 kilowatts of regen right there. All right, let's pull out now. Actually, the graphics on the screen are very intuitive. They're very, they really supply the information. You see how much you're pulling now? 55, 58, 60? 60 kilowatts. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Old mini dealer. Yeah. You used to work there. That's where I used to work. Yeah. Oh, nice spec e-tron right there. Yeah, that is. I like that. Yeah, that's the Q8. Oh, so we're still down to one mile range and it hasn't kicked on. That's full throttle. Combustion engine's not on. 65 kilowatts is all this thing will do, full throttle. Maybe, uh, at, maybe at low state of charge. Well, I, don't, I don't think low state of charge doesn't impact this car at all, Kyle. Really? It's just, it's like binary okay. from what I can tell. Yeah, so they must have a big buffer. Yeah, there is a big, big top and bottom buffer on this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And let's come in for regen. I'm just going to hit the brakes a little harder than one would. 35 kilowatts of regen right there. On but it's cold it'll battery. do more than that. It's a, But it's a cold battery. So, uh, yeah. yeah that's, that's uh, it's impressive. 43 degrees out. Yeah, that's yeah. cold. Yeah, that's cold. That's really cold for a battery. Yeah. But how do you like the er like the ergonomics? Like where your right elbow is? and you, I mean, great. it feels great, doesn't it? They really got it good. right. They got it totally. Don't done. hit that. Yeah. Subaru. Yeah, we'll try not to. Thank you. Um, but I hate the seat. The seat is really? like a, a wooden brick. I've never been in such a firm seat. Uh, I like I like a and firm. it's just flat. I like a firm mattress, Kyle. Oh, oh, we just ran out of electricity. The combustion engine's on. Yeah. Does it go through a cold start cycle? You can barely hear it. Uh, you hear it when it starts revving up. And you hear it less. I don't hear it at all. Right well, no, it's, it's very seamless. But you will hear it when it, it, it when you're really giving it the beans. It'll it'll pull pretty good. So this is like a circular motion. Let's Don't sit through this here. mess. Turn right up here at the shell. Yeah. Okay. Because when you're coming into Darian yeah, here, let's it, focus on this here. Yeah. So what we have going on here is regen. I can hear the combustion engine running now, and it's charging up the battery a little bit. Do you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it very smooth sounding engine even for being cold it's so funny how the revs do not match your throttle position right because it's it's a generator in yeah. this mode right now so the engine is not connected to vehicle speed or wheel speed so no the engine is is being asked to provide energy to the battery yeah but that means there's a delay in everything that it's doing absolutely yeah, but there isn't a delay in the acceleration. There's a delay in the, when you hear the engine supplying the energy. Wow, and I have this gauge here, and it shows me how hard the engines work. Yes. In the middle. Isn't that gauge? That gauge is awesome. It, I love that it shows you engine load. So the engine's working about 50% load right now, and it's still pretty cold. But it doesn't seem to have any cold start cycle. It sounds like an Atkins cycle, four-cylinder. I get full, you know, electric motor output, and the engine is in total lag behind what it's doing, which is really interesting. Yeah. This is great. Now, I like this type of drivetrain setup for electric pickup trucks and vans, because then you can drive electric all the time. But when you actually need to tow, which I tow a lot with my electric truck, my Rivian, um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of lacking the range and the charging performance sucks. It'd be so nice just to have a little generator engine. And both you and I have owned i3 Rexes, yes. the range extender ones. Those were okay, but um, the, the combustion engine just wasn't powerful enough. If it had, you know, a real juicy combustion engine that you could just drive. I drove one across the country. Yeah. With you, actually. Yeah. And I ran out of gas and electricity. It's a 600 cc engine. This is a 1.4 liter. Sure. It, so it's course. more than double the size, this but, engine. But this, you can see we're just cruising, right? And the combustion engine is directly powering the wheels right now. Well, no, that is not the, that's going into the Voltec system. Oh, okay. And then that's the, that's, that's displaying the fact that energy. Yeah, so Kyle, the, the, what's going on here is the gas engine is putting the energy into the Voltec. This is really where it, 
it, it's taking the energy from the gas engine and then it's putting it either into the battery or directly to the wheels. So when you when you come off, see now you're regening a little bit? Yeah. So if come off the gas, Right, there now the you see it goes to regen. Right, so I guess when it's when it's just trying to keep the battery at zero miles, the engine's not trying to charge the battery right now. It's it can actually directly just power the wheels, but but uh, through the electric motor is what's happening. Right. But if, if I go into mountain mode with the one below there. Oh yeah, hold on. Let's pull this back up. Oh, this is pretty intuitive actually. So here we go. Normal sport mountain. If I go into mountain mode. Now we are going to see the combustion engine should spin up in a second, and it should start charging. It will, it, yeah. It'll it'll bring the battery up to around fifty percent, yeah. just in your normal driving. Okay, but I don't see that on the screen. It it, yet. it doesn't react instantaneously. That's it's, probably good. You know, it's because it's thinking about it. Well, it's also probably a temperature thing. No, uh, it could be. Well, not we just got one bar on the battery actually. Yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah, so now it's juicing. So I see, whenever it has the opportunity, like when I come off throttle, or if I'm light throttle, it charges the battery. But if I whack the throttle down, it still goes everything to the wheels. I'm not sure this gauge is showing you everything that's exactly happening. Because I'm pretty sure I just had battery boost and it didn't show it going out. Mm -hmm. So that's cool, and I can see the engine's under quite a bit of load here in the screen. I have to say, like, the car drives nice. It it feels like this in 2012, whenever it came out, yeah. right, must have felt like the future. Yeah. Remember, I bet a lot of people thought this was the Remember future. at Epcot when we first saw this car, when we came off of GM's test track? That was the future in 2000, and I think it was 2008 or 2009. And then I believe this car came out in 11 as a 12. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is the 15. So it's been around. This is older technology and amazing technology, to be honest. Um, can we jump on the highway for one? Sure. Can? Which yeah. way should we go? Go, go on. Uh, you can go north. Okay. So I'm going to put it into. Actually, what happens when you come to a stop in mountain mode? So the engine's running still. Mm -hmm. Pretty hardcore. I mean, it's really chugging along. Let's go drive mode, sport. Okay, here we go, let's test the power and handling. It's so funny, the engine hasn't spun up at all. <laughs> You're holding on, Dad. Yeah, well, <laughs> remember this is front wheel drive. Yeah, good. And we're getting onto a highway, yeah, car. need all the power, here we go, I'm wide open. Yeah. Traction control spinning. So it's full electric motor, 114 kilowatts. Now the engine's spinning up. Still pin. Wow, gets up to speed. This isn't bad. God, I know. I'm telling you, this is I love this little car. I really do. I'm a little sad that I'm selling it. I think, oh, wow, this is cool. I think actually. I should keep this and sell the ELR. I'm going to put this in the normal mode now. So now we're cruising. So this is my first ever Voltec experience. I'm not sure your recommendation to go here was just get off the next exit yeah you'll be all right i think maybe someone's stuck on the right lane all the way up there you can see that oh yeah i see that stopped in traffic so we will legally make a lane change technically not but by the time this video goes up i'll be out of the state of connecticut you never know when you're back in though <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> i think the new canaan police will be after you again <laughs> again they've been after me my whole life for driving stuff <laughs> oh man i remember one time you called me hey dad yeah, so Can you come drive the car home? They won't let me drive it home. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. So yeah, this is great. Really loving the uh, loving the Volt. Uh, this is a technology that I can't believe has stalled. Check. I know. Check this out up here too. You got a little power port up in there. Okay, nice. But but I think on a bigger scale, this idea of having a range extended electric vehicle makes so much more sense to me than having a uh, plug-in hybrid where it's primarily combustion with a bit of electric help. I like the idea of primarily electric with some combustion help. You can get off here. This is where we're gonna get off? Yeah, okay. if you can. Yeah, oh, no problem. Not my car. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's, uh, let's jump in the ELR. Uh, this has been a really cool experience. It's amazing how for 145,000 miles, the car feels 
essentially brand new other than your steering wheel being off. The brakes feel good? Bra yeah, I haven't even really hit the brake pedal much at all. That's, uh, well, oh yeah, I have coming onto the highway, I gave it. Yeah. Really nice blending. Does it even do blending? Yes. Uh, 27, 26, oh yeah, definite. 44 kilowatt regen right there. Yeah. So definitely. And you, do, and you don't feel, now one thing you do feel though, and I, I'd like you to check it out, is yeah. in low mode. I'm in low. Okay, when you're going stop and go, like slow, mo just very slow, yeah. You can go right here and then turn left at the next light. Okay. Um, what happens is you feel a little bit of a, almost like a thump going in and out it, it, when you're in the low mode. But when you're in drive, that goes away. All right, well, let's uh, see if I'm, I'm trying it now. Don't, don't feel any thump yet. Here, let me turn this. Turn left here. I'm just, uh, I'm pulling the max here. Oh no. <laughs> as long as you don't pull a Jordan. Right, yeah, let's not pull a Jordan. <laughs> yeah, not, not really feeling it. Oh yeah, a little click. There's a little something like something. Motor mount is yeah. just a little off it. Look at that wheel spin. All oh the yeah. Way through. I mean it's not slow. Even well, though the dead battery. The ELR is about a second and a half faster zero to sixty. This thing is but over this is all you need. eight seconds. 8.3 maybe right. something like that yeah but for a little commuter car you yeah no it's straight it, I, right. i've been driving this every day uh left here left here okay. yeah yeah wow i really can't believe how high quality this powertrain feels you can really tell they spent a lot of money engineering it because the startup is dead smooth the way that it responds in terms of rpm to compensate for what you're doing with the electric motor even though it's not in real time shows really good tuning and I'm really like blown away actually by all this stuff. This, if I drove this in 2012, no question, I would be thinking this is the future of cars because back then there was no charging station infrastructure. Um, and even now it sucks. So Kyle, why do you think, yeah, right, sorry. Why do you think GM threw the towel in on this technology? Because it's GM, they're so great at engineering some of the best technologies and then just canceling the project. It's what they do. I mean, but but don't you think that this this couldn't they bring back this technology in a revised? Well, they are. Wait, is that what the bolt, the new bolt, is going no, to be? No, no, bolt's full electric. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So but, what? But so it's going to be. Um, they're working on plug-in hybrids for pickup trucks. And oh, stuff like Silverado and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I hope, it's this range extended EV thing because the only other thing on the market, it's the i3, it's this, and it's the new Ram Charger from Stellantis. So how? Right. That I'm excited about that truck. Absolutely. Um, and I've never been a Dodge guy. Me either. Yeah. Never. I've yeah. always been Ford pickups. GM, Suburbans, and Escalades. Yeah, but I don't really like the excursions or the expeditions. But you've owned an excursion. No, I know, but I, I'm just saying, like, I've always been split between Chevy and Ford with when it comes to between pickups and you know the sure. SUVs. Yeah. But and never Dodge. Like yeah, I, I've owned one. one but, but we review cars objectively. No, I so get you can't that. Let your personal bias get in the way. No, a hundred percent. And I'm I'm really excited for that Dodge. But tell me how. What's the difference between this and the Rav Four plug-in hybrid, or let's say like a Prius Prime? I, I think my audience kind of understands. Well, one second, let me just go and do a full throttle launch. So power braking it. I'm full throttle on the brakes. It has not kicked on the combustion engine. Even if I go to drive, same thing, and off the brakes. Oh man! <laughs> that, that, I was feeling some lateral G's there. Yeah, you just stay batted in this car or left here, I imagine. Yes. Okay. You uh, remember this way down the road? I remember one. this little section. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't really know where we are, but I remember. Yeah, you're going to come out Norwalk Community yeah. College right up this here. This is a extremely nice car. Wow, good pickup there, 114 kilowatts. That's what I'm talking about, Kyle. Yeah, really nice. I like this uh, and, train a lot. And Kyle, I bought this for 5,500 bucks. That's crazy to me. This is the most high quality $5,500 experience you could have. That's amazing. This is really, this is a great car. I've been telling you. Yeah, no, I'm really, really impressed. Really impressed. Even, you know, not only with the Volt stuff, but with this particular one. Oh, so I just felt the throttle mapping change going from low to drive at speed. Mm-hmm. So that definitely made a difference. But we're in sport mode, so another another full throttle. 
Oh, oh. yeah, wheel spin. <laughs> Look at that. Smoke. So once you get a little bit of juice in the battery, it just rips the tires off. <laughs> Really great. Uh, so the difference between this and RAV4 Prime or any other plug-in hybrid is um, they have their electric motor and their combustion engine essentially separated. And there's many different ways of doing plug-in hybrids. You can have a, um, you know, basically an e-axle. So like Volvo plug-in hybrids have a dedicated axle just to the electric mm -hmm. motor. And so they actually do one pedal driving now in their new stuff, which is pretty great. And uh, yeah, you definitely want to drive this in L for sure. You get really good one pedal almost driving. And uh, it's a cop right up yeah, there. Yeah, but I'm not speeding. I'm going three under. Three miles an hour, the regen stops, and then the car coasts. Right, and then it does a coasting. Yeah, it does a, more of a camera. more of a coasting. It's it's more of a you know an ice feel, if you will. So. One option, of course, is to do uh, an, uh, an electric axle. Most plug-in hybrids have an integrated electric motor into the transmission, and many of them, especially the Germans, are going pre-transmission. So you essentially have your, your crankshaft output of your combustion engine into an electric motor and then into your eight-speed, 10-speed transmission, whatever they're, they decide to hook it up to. And in the case of Porsche, they even hook it up to a dual-clutch transmission, and it has to do the clutches on the electric motor, which is really wild. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a wet clutch, so there's not much wear, but it's it's pretty cool. Those pre-transmission systems I don't like because you feel the shifts in through the electric motor. So you, especially in the dual clutch one, you have to wait for it to basically do the manual clutch thing yeah. on the electric motor. It gets really weird. Um, the Volvo stuff is nice because they are pre-transmission. However, or I should say, they are um, you know a, 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 uh, exclusive axle power. They just don't make that much power. This will give you pretty much full power even from the electric motor. Yes. And the combustion engine is not like, you go wide open throttle in this, it gives it to you, and then the combustion engine can ramp up and just charge the battery. Mm -hmm. Versus those, you go wide open throttle, you have limited performance, and then the combustion engine kicks on and you go, whoa, it's so quick and so unsmooth through everything because, um, you know, it's, it's now, primarily a combustion car this is primarily an electric car right, right? so you get a really good ev like driving experience good pedal modulation and uh, really good power off the line as we've demonstrated comment just a little bit about the interior materials because we're about to jump in the elr and yeah. you're going to be stepping into luxury and yeah, here this, this is, is just basic utility don't need any more I mean, you know, hard plastics and what have you. Yeah. But the dash looks pretty sweet, the way they have these lines and everything. I, I think it's nice. Yeah, but this, this car is only interesting because of the drivetrain. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's swap cars and try that one out. The suspension in this at low speed, yeah, I hear the clunk, and it's yeah. fine at speed, but it's a little crashy yeah. through here. Absolutely. Pull down. Dad, this is a, it's a four-seater. Yeah, four, well, because it's got a T battery, it goes back like that. But I don't think I've ever even seen the huge hatchback. Yeah, huge hatchback. It go, it's like half the car opens up this way. Yeah, and the ELR is completely useless. Yeah, wow, um, this is, oh, and you got uh, an E, what is this? That's the charger. This is an EVSE? Yeah. A little 120 volt NEMA 5, yeah, and that's the 515. Uh, and it gives you a um, battery. But this uh, is huge. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Oh, and then this is your, your 12 volt is under here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you want it in the rear for better weight distribution for the handling characteristics. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how much leg room there is behind you. Wow. None. Yeah. But it's cool in the back. This, this must have looked really cool on like 2008 CAD design or whatever automotive thing. Not a powered? No, not Lift powered. gate? No. Okay. Wow. I'm really. And you see these? Truly impressed. You're yeah, parking sensors. Have these. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they, the new camera update's pretty good. Yeah, wow, this is great. And really, here, really nice. Put the gas in. Right, but you have to hit the fuel yeah, release. The fuel, so. so that's that's fuel. Mm -hmm. Very cool car. 17 inch wheels. Yeah, th see if they could put this drivetrain in a pickup truck, Yeah. I would be sold. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow, definitely before the days battery electric cars were ready for mass market. It's yeah. just, uh, what year is this one again? 2015. And 2012 they launched? Either 11 or 12. Okay, yes. yeah. By, by 2015, I think EVs were ready. But this was, if this came out in like 05, that would have been amazing. But, you know, the 2016 Volt, uh, this, the Gen 2, they made a lot of significant changes 
I don't really know that much about that, but a lot of people have been telling me, oh, that's a much better car. I yeah. just love the look of this. Yeah, car. you don't need any more than this. This is this fine. This is just awesome. And honestly, I, I, I put it in mountain mode. I got to experience a little bit of the electric afterwards, but yeah. even when it's using the combustion engine, totally fine. And when you think about it, if you do the math, if 66% of this car's life was on electric, that means that with 144,000 miles on the gas on the engine or on the car, you don't really have even close to 100,000 miles on the gas engine. Yeah, but there are 100,000 of like cold starts and pretty high usage cycles. So I would say that's probably a pretty aggressive 100,000 miles. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I would think at least. But wow, very smooth. Really, really nice. Can I show you the... Uh, yeah, let's... Can we do the ELR or what you got here? I want to show you like the bolt back. Oh yeah, the engine and stuff. Yeah. Underneath here, uh, because you'll see how clean the ELR is compared to this, and there's a, a, a very interesting situation that might have happened with with the heat. Well, I just locked it by accident. Okay. Okay. This so, looks good. Look, look at this up here. Oh yeah, some failure in the. So but this that's is fine. the Voltec here. When you say this is the Voltec, what so, what actually so, is that? So basically, this is the. This is where all of the energy, I think what, when GM designed this, they, the theory was no matter what you would power the battery pack with, whether it's a gas engine, a diesel engine, a fuel cell engine, the energy would go into this Voltec system. So this is like a power distribution Correct. conversion Correct. box. Correct. And then okay. connected to that somehow is a very sophisticated gearing system and, um, and planetary Gears or I those are words, yes. <laughs> no, but that's <laughs> those I, are I, words. I read about that. I don't yeah, know yeah. what that is. Yeah. But but the idea of what GM had was no matter what engine, what kind of right, whatever you could get energy from could go through here and transfer it to the wheels. That's is what correct. you're trying to say. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> that's great. That's really smart. It's a cool idea. It's probably not the most efficient way to transfer power for a singular source, but if you're building a modular system where you can have basically agnostic to the vehicle power. That's right then this starts to make more sense. Absolutely. It's not a, a real dedicated power solution. Like it's not, you know, Tesla with an electric or a battery pack and a motor right. set system. But I like this idea. And I think uh, certainly there's plenty of people who are not ready for an electric car and there's plenty of use cases where an electric car is not ready for anyone. Right. And that uh, for me is, is towing. This, this gives a lot of peace of mind to people that are unfamiliar with newer technology. And I think it has a spot in the marketplace. I really do. I'm happy that I've spent a lot of time. One thing I do want to say, Kyle, is we're, even though when, we, when you started driving this earlier it had about four miles of range or something yeah, like that. three yeah and you notice that even when you floored it the gas engine didn't kick on yeah you're going to notice something very different with the elr but it's not the elr it's okay. your elr my elr yeah your elr is broken and I we're going to get to that i think it is because yeah. you're, you're going to experience that but anyway this was amazing wow cool experience dad solid. all right it's solid yeah let's go let's go take out the elr so now it's my time to experience the ELR. Here's the lightning I'm about to take on a road trip. We're going to Florida. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be fun. But I have never seen or been in. I've seen, but I've never been in an ELR. Oh, baby. I take photos of them whenever I see one. So this is kind of an exciting moment. First of all, look at the shark fin compared to the... Yeah, classy. The design of this car on yeah. the outside is just absolutely gorgeous yeah oh absolutely yeah and really cool a, car a couple of things that but but maybe our audience doesn't know this is a volt underneath correct this is a gen one volt same same battery same engine exactly the same very much differently tuned we're not sure if that's because this one's broken no, 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 i'm saying out of the factory oh, okay they were tuned to be much more sporty and as a matter of fact just so you know, they made less than 3,000 of these, about 2,950 of them. They brought it out in 2014. It was $75,000 base. Crazy. Now think about that. They were competing against the Model S. Yeah, which was less money. Which was less money. And, and this is two doors, <laughs> but it's a cool car. It's a cool car. But this right? is not a 2014. No, no. What I'm saying is they brought the car out in 2014. Yeah. And in, they didn't sell. So in 2015, they were like, what the heck? They didn't sell any. There was not a 2015 model. And what they did was they modified the 2016 and they made, I think, less than 600 of these. So this wow. is a 2016. This is rare. Per potentially a collector's item. No, I mean, <laughs> okay. I agree. I want this car. I, I'm serious yeah. when I say but that. But I might actually, after that Volt experience, if this drives anything like it, I'll probably buy this car from you. 
Okay. So that leaves you. Oh well, we, we, yeah, well, we got to talk about price. Then. Yeah, no, you're gonna give us give me the discount. It's oh, got tint discount. already. You got tints on this thing. Well, wait a minute. How do you open the door? Like a Corvette. Oh, in here. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a CTS V coupe or, oh, or a yeah. CTS coupe. Very wow, similar. look at this. I feel like I've aged 50 years just by looking in this interior. Do you think you need to grow a mustache? Wait, you do have a mustache. I have a slight mustache, <laughs> yes. Wow, this hasn't cracked your plastic. Yeah, notice the carbon fiber. Yeah, racing. Lightweight. How much does this weigh, by the way? Uh, 4,000. Oh, wow. Uh, 200, something that's, like that. That's pretty heavy. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And you've got it fully charged to this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, here, I'm going to have you film me All right. trying out sitting in an ELR for the first time. This is really, um, I've been looking forward to this for years, years and years and years. I used to go to the Cadillac dealer just to see these things. Yeah. I, I you know, I remember when I was at high point with Ben, we were actually test driving a Mirai. Was it a Mirai? No, it was a Mirage, whatever that, you know, three-cylinder Mitsubishi when it first launched. Oh, the Mirage. Like it, yeah, yeah, it was like the cheapest car on sale or something. We went to go try it. And this was at the Cadillac dealer next door. And we just were like, wow, so cool. But they were closed, so I couldn't go inside. Kyle, I went into the Greenwich Cadillac dealer. They've yeah. seen they've they've seen six of them. Right. Yeah. In Greenwich. Wow, you got a traction control off button front and center for the racing. This is really Batmobile-esque. So is there a start button? Yeah, there's a start up on the dash. Oh, all the way up here. Yeah. See, this makes normal GM noises. Contactors are clicking. Brake pedal just boosted. It's probably got an eye booster or something. Mm -hmm. Let's show the viewers. You are driver number one. So this is the door release. Wow, that is not a solid door, thunk. This car... <laughs> may not have aged as well as his Volt has. So heated seats. So this has every option, adaptive cruise. Adaptive cruise was a $1,200 option. It doesn't seem like much. You got your V-Peak in here, which yeah. we should, I'm actually gonna pull this out, your OBD dongle, okay. because we need this for yeah, the lightning. My pocket. By, yeah. by the way, the uh, the Volt came with with the WeatherTech floor mats. Yeah. And they fit perfectly in this. Oh, nice. Okay. That's great. So I put them in here. Does it have a heated steering wheel? Yes. Yes, it does. Wow. It, it does have heated seats, but they do not work. Oh. I got an estimate of over $2,000 to fix them. <laughs> I said, I'm going to keep myself a cold butt. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Cadillac was like, you know. Well, so maybe I should find another 2016 ELR, not this one. I need, I need heated seats. Wow, this is cool, Dad. So I'm going to hand this over to you. Okay. Let's explore this. So first off, everything feels totally different. It's got the Cadillac. Is this the Q system? It is C-U-E, Q system, yes. Yeah. And so it's haptic. or It, um, it is or, haptic, yes. Is that the word, or is it touch capacitive, I think is what I should say? Uh, capacitive. It's, uh, it's, okay. I've you do feel that. a little, do you feel any force feedback on them? Yeah, yeah. There's a haptic. dead spot right here. Good. And so the way to get <laughs> yeah, it, that's no, I, right where the energy I, menu. I, is. I know, but I. Well, I've, that's cool. I have dual buttons, so I work around it. Okay, but and, but that's funny because that's that must mean that the previous owner was a nerd, and they were just always going to the energy menu. Maybe it's possible. So how do you get in there? So the way that I get in there is I go up here. Oh, so this is the energy menu then. So you got your flow, you've got your charging, eight amps, but you can. Warning, you can go... What? 12, I think. Oh, it's like you'll die if you charge at 12A. <laughs> Wait till they see what DC fast charging does for modern cars. And, uh, okay, so that's fine. Great. So we're, we're full power in this bad boy right now. Full power. Full battery power. So seatbelt on. We also have drive modes, right? Yeah. Put now, it. the modes, if you remember in the Volt, were over here. Yeah. The modes are over here. Right. But still got nice cup holders with like a sort of... Oh, you want to see the best feature in any car ever? Are they a heated? A power cup holder cover. Wow, it is legit power. It's not... Uh, and just push it away. Yeah, it's not like a spring thing. No, <laughs> that's amazing. That's why this was seventy-five grand. Yeah, and then Kyle in twenty sixteen, they couldn't sell them for seventy-five grand. They lowered the price. They made the car better. Yeah, like faster suspension, and, and they lowered stuff. the price by ten grand. And they still couldn't sell them, so they canceled it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what a car! This this is a cool experience, actually. So, I imagine it has oh a lumbar adjustment. 
There's no way this has... Oh, yeah, no, it's all power seats. Oh, yeah. Okay. Welcome to the There ER. are paddles. There are. But I'm not sh seeing anything that they adjust. We'll have to no, it's for region. Into reverse. We're going to have to Ferris Bueller this thing out of here. Is that it? No, Austin Powers. <laughs> so let's just squeeze around. No front camera. So I'm not sure what's here, actually. Is there anything there? What do you mean? Anything in front of our car there? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, this is not nearly as smooth as your Volt is, Dad. Thank you. I can tell you that right now. It's so, a little... so are you not buying this now? Well, I'm just not. I'm feeling the I'll tell you what. Maybe there. what I should do is sell this and keep the Volt. I mean, the Volt is much more practical as well. Four doors. Yeah. You know what? We got to put on the climate control. Hold on one second. All right. Why do we need that? Because we're about to fog up. Oh, yep. Yeah. That would be... Got to see where we're going. But I'm just... This is... The shifting was definitely clunky at low speed. You feel it. Dunk, 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 dunk. Yeah. And I definitely feel the low speed clunk in this. Yes. Where I did not really notice it much in that one. They feel very similar. Okay. And by the way, you remember I, I told you I drove Tim's 2014 ELR? We mm -hmm. went and did a comparison of the 2014 versus the 2016. Yes. His ELR does the same exact, it has the same exact clunky in low mode. Okay. And then it goes away in drive. So I've just clicked on auto climate. We're still on battery power only. You do have a, not a check engine light. That's just showing power. That's right. When I originally drove this car, the, mm -hmm. actually the one that Tim bought from uh, the Jeep dealership here in Norwalk, mm -hmm. I thought that meant the check engine light was on. It's not. Like that that little indicator over mm -hmm. there. I almost feel like I have more room and fit better in the Volt than this. I hear you. Yeah. That, well, this is this is a bit cramped now. Look at the uh, look at this over in the back, Kyle. The oh, how wow. the, the like bucket seats. Back there. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go out in the ELR. I've always wanted to drive one of these. What um, mode are you in, first of all? I in, whoa, so, the brake blending, not good. The, the uh, Volt is so much better already. Mode? There's Tour, tour Sport, Mountain, and Hold in this car. I'm in Tour. Tour is the same as normal in the Volt. Okay. We are going for a Tour. 107,000 miles on this car. Right, and the percentage of electric driving in this one is... 42%. Still pretty high. Still pretty high, but... It's been, when it was working properly. So the engine just kicked on instantly. Yep, and that's a problem. Yeah, it should probably shouldn't do that. It, should, it absolutely should not. Yeah. And, and in the Volt, it does not. Right, because it's definitely... It's, definitely it's, fine. it's not like the car doesn't work or anything like that, but right. it's there's something odd about the way that it's... But you still wouldn't really know unless you have this gauge going here. Uh, you would know it maybe at higher revs, but I'm just saying on initial startup. Yes, you know, I would agree with that. Yeah, so this feels like a little bit looser to me, like in terms of build quality, and it's certainly uh, you know much much sportier, if you will, or just less practical because it nothing give, is giving me sporty vibes. But it's a very cool car. And and oh, this all this is leather up here, full leather dash. Right, well, you can start to see it fail, failing. But here. not bad. Not bad. It's just got some yeah, heat cycles, it feels like. So off we go then. In the ELR. Yeah, engine's already on. It probably shouldn't be doing that. It, yeah, engine's ripping right now. I know. So I'm guessing. That's why when I'm, I'm about to put up a video... I think this car's got a problem. There's no way it should be on. And even if we go off on the climate, the engine's still on. Yeah, that's what It's I not even using battery power right now. We're just driving off the engine. Zero battery is helping us and it's fully charged. And we're in tour, we don't have any crazy modes. No, I know, I know. So yeah, this one's got an issue, Dad. I know it does. Okay. I know, I'm not sure what the issue is. I don't think it's not the battery no, because battery. I've looked at the voltage on all 96 cells mm -hmm. and the voltage is very similar. There, there's one cell, cell number 96, that is a little bit low, but there's no way that this is a battery issue. It's something else. And and I don't think it's a big deal, but, oh, I. by the way, Kyle, oh, I, I just felt a change and now we're on battery power. Okay. That guy, Tim, with his 2014, 
You remember how his car wasn't charging? Yeah. He got it fixed, $400. What was it? It was like some fluid was low. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do a little follow-up video at some point on that. Yeah. I'll find out exactly what. all 400 ELR owners left in existence. Really no. helpful content. No. They must be loving your videos. Who's they? Yeah, well, there's got to be a few ELR owners out there. There are. Oh, no, listen, Kyle, this is, I'm telling you, collector's item here. Yeah, but overall, your Volt is much better sorted. I'm hearing some front-end clunk suspensions, like bushings. It's time to start doing, thinking about those. And Yeah. Yeah, the Volt is is sorted. This this just feels like an old car. The Volt felt new still. <laughs> but, but that's not to say I'm enjoying this experience any less, because this is the one I would want to own out of the two because this is cool. Would you want to own this particular specimen? It's possible, yeah, but I'm not paying you what you paid for it. Well, uh, then I'm selling it. <laughs> I don't think you're going to get it. This thing sat no, on the lot Kyle, for years. Kyle, these things are over 20 grand. Yeah, no, I'm not paying you over 20 grand. No, I wouldn't ask you to. Um, wow, that. see, now we just accelerated full-on battery power only. Yep. Interesting. Um, Ooh, brake pedal is spicier than the Volt for sure. Have you noticed that? Not really. Power is big power. See, this is wide open, combustion engine's off. Right. So that's good. Maybe it is working normally. Maybe it's just a climate control thing. No, I mean, when I had- Because I just shut climate off, right? And now we're driving- it, it, The battery off. still kicks on. Kyle, when I did- I mean the I, engine. I meant, uh, yeah, the engine. When I, when I compared on the same loop, and that video will be going live, I'm gonna edit it while we're going down to Florida. Yeah. The, the Volt went, you ready for this? 35.4 miles, and I drove the thing between 30 and 49. I didn't go 50, mm -hmm. and I didn't go on the highways, mm -hmm. but I went between 30 and 49 miles an hour, and the Volt engine did not kick on once until 35.4 miles. The ELR, I could not get the car to go down to zero state per, zero percent state of charge. Yeah. It it was programmed to stay at four percent state of charge, and the well, that battery could be, that could be cell ninety six. No, I don't think it is. Something else is going well, on. These are the little minutia. It doesn't matter so. No, much I know, but I'm just saying. That'll all be. Do you know that the the battery in the same distance in the ELR? I'm sorry, the gas engine kicked on 62 times. Sure, but we don't know if that's a this particular vehicle issue or not, because right now the combustion engine's running, right? And I'm not using any battery power. However, I just did a wide open up that entire hill in pure electric mode. Yeah. So we know that everything is functioning, but there's a tuning oddity going on here. And I actually think it might have to do with the climate control request because I, I keep switching climate on and off. So I just shut climate off as an example. The engine is now off. I've not changed throttle position at all. Right. And now we're running on battery power. So I'm not gonna change throttle position again. Let's go heater on as an example. We're just gonna keep same throttle position. Yeah. Will it kick on the combustion? There's a lag, of course. I don't know, we'll keep an eye on that. But I think it might have something to do with your heating system. Mm -hmm. Because it, when you shut climate off, it seems to work pretty good. I know you said it doesn't, but now we're driving with the heater on and we're in full battery mode. Yeah, no, it, it everything works. It's just somehow it's we, getting a trigger to turn the gas engine on. Yeah, earlier than it needs to. Yeah. Now, I want you to go into, once you're ready, I want you to try out sport mode yeah. and feel the difference because Here this is are. considerably faster. Does it have faster. an active damper or no? I don't know. What, no. Okay. Oh, uh, no, it does. I think it does. All right, so now we're in sport mode. Whoa, full revs. Yeah. There, okay, this is spicy. Oh, and the regen paddle. You can pull the left paddle, you get huge regen. How much in, in the gauge? Well, it only showed 40 something kilowatts, but I peaked it before it could catch up. Okay. So let's do a quick uh, hard throttle out of here, yeah? Ready? Sure. Whoa, that's all electric motor, because now the electric, now the combustion engine. And you hear it rev? Yes, yeah, spinning up. But notice it's not as loud in the ELR because oh, this car is much yeah. more insulated. It does engine braking as well when you pull the left paddle. Did you hear the revs just shoot up under re under braking? Here, look, let me demonstrate. I'll bring up the speed, okay? Yeah. So we're doing, I don't know, 50 miles an hour. I'm gonna pull the left paddle. Take a listen. Engine shooting up. Really? Listen. 
Oh yeah, I hear it yeah, now. 43, 43 kilowatts. So it's doing engine braking as well as uh, regenning the battery. Yeah. So it's it's using it's taking all the force out. I, I read a lot about the way the engineers retuned the 2014 to the 2016 yeah. ELR, and they really changed a lot of the mappings in the 2016. The 2016, I think, is definitely the one to buy, which is what this is. Yeah, well, and it feels, feels generally pretty sorted. It's also the steering is slightly to the right, like your Volt. Uh, I put brand new tires on this one as well. Yeah, nice. Yeah, they seem to have good good traction, good grip. Yeah. Really, uh, really loving this whole drivetrain thing between the two cars. You definitely got that sorted. Ergonomics? Uh, ergonomics, the Volt wins for sure, but this is like a cool looking special you feel You feel better? What about the seat in this car compared to the... Yeah, the seat's just slippery in old leather. Yeah. Yeah, you really got to clean these. <laughs> we're gonna go just a quick exit down the highway. Let's. Uh, so we're still in uh, sport mode. So let's give it a send on the highway. Yeah, traction control off. See, it feels a little bit slow here. I don't know why. Sometimes it gives you big power, and sometimes not. Wow, good grip for these tires, Dad. And you told me to buy the OEM. Yeah, these are not bad. The Bridgestone Potenzas had a horrible rating. I got the Continental something whatever. The guys at Town Ford Tire, they, they looked at me and said, you're getting a much better tire with these. So we're getting the same speeds as we did with your Volt. Well, remember, it's the same exact car. But this is supposed to be faster. It is. Uh, but uh, it's, it's sometimes. quicker. It, zero to 60 is a second and a half quicker yeah. than, than the... Maybe turning traction trough limits power or did something, but yeah, I definitely feel like this, <laughs> I'm not getting a consistent response out of this car, which is in the Volt, everything was predictable. This leaves a lot more question marks. Would yeah. you agree with that? Um, because you're not sure why things are happening. We're not sure right. why the power was a little bit late. Yeah, there. It just frustrates me that I can, that I can't keep the car in battery mode well, like, what state of charge? Are we? We're still at, like, 75% state of charge here. Yeah, but I'm going because I've been driving in sports, so the engine's been on. So now I've just put it to tour. The combustion engine is only powering the wheels right now. Oh, now we've just switched to battery. So combustion engine's off, climate's on, things are happening. If I give it some throttle, it's still fully electric. I'm wide open. Combustion engine's off. That's 90 kilowatt, 91 kilowatt. And, it, and, it, and it's... Compared, comparing this to a an EV, let's say a Model 3 rear-wheel drive, this thing is slow. See, Doesn't it feel slow? Yeah, very slow. I mean, it does not jump off the line like a I traditional EV. I line, it's good. Well, no, I'm just the, saying like you were doing 50 and yeah. you gave it the beans. Yeah, this type of stuff. That It doesn't do anything. Right. Like an electric car, an electric vehicle will, but yet you're in electric mode. Yeah, and it's staying and in it, electric. And it's now. staying in electric mode when you're doing that, and it just doesn't do anything. Yeah. That you know, like. But that's okay. These are the little. Uh, yeah, no, I, I on know. A high level, the powertrain technology is really cool. Yeah. The car is really cool. The brake pedal in this is is le I would say worse tuned, but spicier than your uh, Volt was. But look at the look at the cornering grip. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, keep in mind these are these are um, the Volt has two fifteen. 40 55 17s and this is 255 so it's got 40 yeah. millimeter and brand new tires and brand new tires <laughs> and, and 20 inch that. wheel plus a lower sidewall you know yeah, good, uh, short, so response. so you're going to have a lot more grip on this car but i'm i'm able to drive it now wide open everywhere like this quite aggressively and we are staying in complete electric mode 91 kilowatts, pure battery, right? Yeah, I'm just mad at the whole way up this hill, but it is not fast. No. I mean, I mean it's still flow. Imagine. <laughs> it's it's derated down to 84. Kyle, miles. imagine in 2014 going and driving a Model S versus this. You said left here? Yeah, left. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying, if you were going to cross shop well, the well, cars. You just buy a Model S, it's just way cooler. That's... But in, in today's world, this is a neat piece, piece of history, and it is cool because no one bought it. That's right. Yeah. And th there is arguably very few cars that 
look as nice as this car does. At least that's my opinion. I think it's a gorgeous design. Yeah, really nice looking car. It's a cool piece. It's a conversation piece. And it actually handles pretty well. Yeah. It, the, I, I heard the 14s were not great. But if I just, you know, kind of come through here and huck it this way, look at that response. And it's staying fully electric, Dad. How does this compare to your Polestar? No, One. there's no comparison. No comparison. That's right. a hundred and sixty-five thousand dollar car. This is fifteen grand. Or what no, but did you pay for this? I paid fourteen. Yeah, there's still. Some well, I've got about I've got about seventeen into it right now. That with the tires and the tax and. <laughs> I, I would pay you ten for this. All right. Well, you're not buying this car. <laughs> this car is officially for sale. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, but this is a cool, a really cool car. Um, I definitely have to own one of these one day, and, and probably it will be this one. I'm sure we'll work out something. I don't think so. I think I think we'll close <laughs> so, the gap. We got no. There's. I'm yeah. telling you right now. We'll we'll be smack dab in the middle. Kyle, of I will get 17 grand for this car all day long. If you're not willing to pay me 17, you're not buying it. Okay. Well, whatever. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Uh, oh, we'll that's that's too much fun. So yeah, let's do a quick acceleration run back into sport mode. I oh, think sport. Look at that Mustang. Good. He's just so jealous. That's interesting. It, uh, it's a GT. Yeah, I guess they say E4X on the back end. All right, let's go. Left behind the brake, flooring it with the right. Yeah, so combustion engine on, much faster in sport mode. So that's where the extra power is coming from. And yeah, here's where you really feel. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Just do a braking test. You don't feel any ABS in the brake pedal. Completely brake by wire. Huh. Yeah. I did not know that. You just that. don't feel anything. It's just, you just hit the floor. But it came to a stop pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah great, great traction. Really liking this a lot. You notice it didn't spin the tires like it did in the Volt. Well, that's what I've been saying. A lot more, better traction. A lot more tire. Yeah. I like how you just noticed now, but we've been talking about it for the last five minutes. I was thinking about other things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think this car, you just put it in tour, become an old man, and just cruise. This is, I think it's operating normally, Dad. I think it just occasionally kicks on the combustion engine, but now that everything's up to temperature, and we have a minimal request on the climate control, it seems to be very nicely tuned. You know, it is possible, when I did that test, mm -hmm. that loop test, the Volt versus the ALR, it was 38 degrees out, yeah, and it be. went down to 32 degrees, and that might have just put it into that mode where it's saying, preserve battery. You know, yeah. I, I, I yeah. There's definitely, you know, for example, the the Volt. Well, <sighs> so yeah, flooring it in in tour mode did not kick on the uh, combustion engine. Do the same thing in sport. I just did before, and it kicks on the combustion engine. So maybe it is operating perfect. Like yeah, yeah. it's okay. very possible. So yeah, I've got it set on adaptive cruise on the closest gap now, and just cruising along. I use the adaptive cruise. It's excellent. Yeah. Very good. Right. And you know, when I had it on, I forgot it didn't steer. Oh, so you're just like <laughs> pulling one of these. Yeah. Like, exactly. Oh, <laughs> exactly. I, was like, I was on the LIE. I was like, wait a minute. How come it's not steer? It was like that. Yeah. I had one of those in the Silverado EV the other day and I was like, oh boy, this yeah. one does not steer. It's just, you forget about things, you know? It's, I would say it's operating normally because right. now it's full battery. Well, it just could be, it could just do it when it's cold. Yeah. I think that's probably what it is. Yeah. Well, I have to say, thank you for letting me have a go in both of these fine machines. The EOR, it's a little bit a case of don't drive your heroes. I had it such high expectation in my head, and it has not met that expectation. Uh, but now I'm coming around to it with re-imagined uh, expectations for what this car is. And well, I really, uh, I, I mean, both of them. I, I didn't bring that expectation up No, I've at just all. always been ELR, the elusive ELR. As you put it in your video, it, it, did you like that that uh, ad adjective Volvo elusive C ELR with no headlights on? Oh, it's a very unvolvo thing to do. Yeah, really cool car. I think, and uh, you know the name that I gave this car as well, uh, Eleanor. Eleanor. Yeah, that's not because ELR Eleanor. But Eleanor, you don't like the name? No, that okay. should be a Mustang GT500. From the no, I know. I, I this get... is no relation to that. No, it isn't. But I, I, the reason I did it was just because of the letters ELR oh, and squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> that bridge has always freaked me out. Yeah, I do not like that. I know. I know. So anyway, uh, we've had a great experience, and can't thank you enough. This was great. I've crossed two bucket list cars off my list. 
I could totally see myself buying this one from you and, and likely I will. And this will become my ELR. So take care of the battery. Don't leave it full or dead. We'll park it here at 50%. Right. We'll, and, we'll, we'll uh, discuss whether or not there's a, a, a deal on the there, horizon. There is a deal. All right. It's a deal. All right. That's, this is, that's this okay. Is, this is going to be, this is you're, the spec, right? See, I know what you're doing. You're, you're just, you're trying to play me right now. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's yeah, not, you know, you know, it's got a few yeah, things. It's got a little yeah. few things here and there. It still has the minivan wipers. One thing you cannot take away from this car is its looks. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Oh, and I want to show you, I want to show you under the hood on this car how clean it is. It's insanely clean. All right. So let's look under the hood and then we'll wrap up this video. Sounds good. And I also want to show you how small the trunk is. <laughs> you got to see how small this trunk is back here. Okay. Uh, oh, it's not bad. It's just this, this, what is, what is this? I don't know. A module for something. Yeah. I noticed that the other day. Yeah. So is it an ECU got, hanging down or? I'm, I'm not really sure. Okay. And then uh, you do have the battery there. <laughs> okay. And then you have the same where the heck is this? Oh, yeah, same EVSE. EVSE right there. Okay, uh, great. You got your Feynman cut loop in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the key. Pretty sure we're past February 11th. Yeah, well, guess what? There was a snow day, and I went to register the car, and DMV shut down. So <laughs> if I get pulled over, or if you get pulled over. Yeah, it's all right. I, uh, you know me. I never register my cars. Yeah, I, I do know that. Yeah, but all my cars right now are registered, actually. By the way, I ordered the skin, the skin for the seat. Yeah, the cat and, skin. And they said they didn't have it anymore. Oh, yeah, they don't cover, cover it. Oh, it doesn't say Voltec in here. They're not as proud, but lots of little... I mean, it's been plugged in, which is good. Okay, here you go. And I like how the charging indicators show up in the mirrors here. They that do, is yeah, cool. Green. They, yeah. They wow, this is gorgeous. Isn't it clean? Yeah, this is nice, Dad. This is all mint up in here as well. So what's the ownership history of this car? Uh, third owner. Oh, wow. I'm the third owner. 107,500 miles on this car. And I bought it used, obviously, from a dealer in New Jersey that doesn't know how to sell uh, electric vehicles at all. And they sat on the car for May, since May of 2023. And they how many months? They, they had it up for 21,000 originally. Yeah. yeah. And then they lowered the price down to 13995 wow and so when i walked in they said plus it's going to be a 2995 dollar dealer prep fee i said listen here's the deal you've been sitting on this car since may i'll give you 13995 right now yeah and the guy went for it oh great so great good yeah well you really got yourself one heck of a also the badge vehicle. this is the updated badge which is the one way to tell the 2014s to the 20 the, the 2014s have a round badge oh. this is the updated cadillac badge great it's actually three inches if you look down here yeah there's three inches of ground clearance because yeah so the, you, the ground clearance is super low on this car because it has this this rubber air piece. skirt it's actually a three inches of ground clearance off the ground wow but just look at how beautiful this car is yeah the, this the yeah. two cues about this that are amazing are this has um by the way this has led headlights yeah which are far superior to the um, the volt yeah the, vo the volt and i upgraded the bulbs in the volt and they still are not great but you see the way this comes up and over? Yeah. And then the way it, the way it goes through the rear taillight <laughs> oh, comes up and over? Like, yeah. that's... This this car, you're ready for retirement driving this car. I don't know. Talking about your electric... It's a gorgeous car that I think is now for sale. No, no, I'm going to buy this one. This is cool. <laughs> this is really cool. I like it. like the wheels. I like everything. The one thing, just full disclosure. Yeah. That's wrong with it. Are these the OE tires or no? No. Okay. You see this right here? Little, little something, something. My Polestar on. 1 has the same nick over there, actually. Oh, really? Uh, but you curbed up the wheels here. I did not. No, I did not curb up the wheels. <laughs> okay. I don't curb wheels. Okay. Well, great. Well, thanks for letting me have a go in both of those. Absolutely. That was great. Yeah, really Safety enjoyed systems, it. systems, by the way, on this car, it has, um, you know how the seats vibrate in the Cadillac? Yeah. And so if a car's coming rear cross traffic alert. Yeah, you need it because it's got big blind spots. Yeah. But if you, if car's coming from the right, your right butt vibrates. Yeah. And your it's really, really good technology. Well, thanks again. Thanks to the viewers for joining me on my first Volt and ELR experience. And um, I guess I'm going to buy it. I don't want to buy it from you like right now because we have a big vehicle purchase coming up. But uh, I, I know. But, but Kyle, listen. I'm not, yeah, I'm not taking 10 grand for this car. I'll pay you 13 for it. No. You made money off the videos. Uh, not, no. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> negotiate. Long trip to Florida. On this <laughs> yeah. Look at the window. Yeah, you got the dog in the window over here. Okay. See you guys later. Bye bye.